So for the red team, I'm standing between I'm standing I'm between you and the class actually, which are really, I'm, what we are really excited about. I'm very proud of you guys. And I'm telling you why I'm really excited about it. I mean, we announced. Uh, oh yeah, I need that. We announced. We announced at the Capital Market Day that we had some trucks. We were driving it around. We were showing it. But what we really wanted to do is we want to give you an, uh, an opportunity to drive with the trucks, and that's what we're going to do. So, a warm welcome to uh, to uh, to Cold Las Vegas. I actually didn't pack the right things to be honest with you. Um, but there's five things that we want to talk about today. I mean, you have been with me a little bit longer now. Some of some of you guys know me. Uh, if not, then hold your hands and I'll tell you five, 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 five seconds about myself. But um, I want to tell you a little bit about five things. Number one is the, the diamond strategy a little bit. You know, what are we doing short, short term? Number two, what happened after Capital Market Day? Because you have been with me, so you know all the information. So what have we done? And I want to give you some, some hints how our paths look like in the future too. Then I want to tell you a little bit about technology, maybe let's get boring for you because I mentioned it too much, but I still want to go in there. And uh, you are here for the first time, I know that, maybe it's interesting for you because you already asked the right question about how many cells are in there, etc. Um, the main focus of things that I really want to talk about is co-creation. You know, not only technology, I want to talk about the whole co-creation. When I talk about co-creation, there's more steps than just saying, hey, we are dealing with the customer, and the customer is helping us here developing the trust. So co-creation, we have some steps. And there's a next step that I want to announce at the very end, uh, and, and maybe that is important for you to understand what are the steps look like and where they go with it. Um, so, as I said, I'm standing between you and the Zen drives, we call it. They're really super quiet. Some people would say that's a that's a driving a class eight and it feels like a big golf cart. So you will see it, and we have never let anybody in the press area drive the trucks by themselves. So I think that is really cool, and we are super 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 happy that we can do it today. That's basically all I give to you today. I hope that makes you excited, and maybe my and hopefully my presentation is not as boring. Okay, so big picture. Let's talk about the big picture. What are we doing in the next steps? And this is what we have mentioned before. The big picture for us was in three different steps that Martin Down is always giving us. The first step is gaining headlines. That's basically what we did with Capital Market Day. We said we are ready, we have a family, we have the technology, and, cool, and, and, and gaining headlines is one of the pieces that we need to get out. Quite frankly, when I started the job, there were tons of questions about what are you doing, where are you, what does the technology look like, uh, when are you coming out with things. So all the things were important to message it out that everybody understands what are all things. Number two is gaining knowledge. And gaining knowledge is an investment right now where we talk about co-creation of giving trucks as test trucks, limited numbers to two customers that I will give you the names in a second, but you probably heard about it. I don't want to make it too... Uh, uh, too secretive, it's at the end of the day, it's Penske and NFI. And then, burning business, and can you see the timeline also 2021. So when we talk about where do you want to be, when can you get these trucks in yellow, in green, and in orange, 2021 is, I think, where we're going to be at that point in time. And then, strategically, align with all the regions. It's a little bit small in here, but I think that's, that's basically, for me, the key of the whole message. This is not something that we do here, Dana, in North America out by ourselves. We are heavily involved and entwined with all the development partners that we have at Dana in Japan and in Europe. So that is one of the reasons why technology is going to get very fast in our hands and we gain a lot of experience in a short time frame. What's new, what we can help our colleagues in Germany and Japan is we bring in customers at the very early stage so we learn faster and we can give that information back. So, what have we done so far? That was a big picture. Okay, gaining, gaining uh, headlines, gaining experience, and then gaining business, so to speak. But what have we done so far after the capital market day? And here's kind of the, the, the marks in the timeline what we have achieved so far. Number one, we talked about it, e-cascadian even to the group. So we showed these are the trucks that we showed. By the way, an interesting story is I started off with a class eight. 
Class A was in our focus. This is where DTNA makes the most money, I would say. This is basically the bread and butter machine. But we said the medium duty area is probably more, more fruitful for E mobility than the big class A at this point in time. Established electric vehicle council that was in October. Maybe you remember we started with, we give these innovation free trucks, we give them to Penske and NFI. But we wanted to get more feedback from other people. And I will talk a little bit more what that really entitles. But we wanted to get more people and more opinion and our learnings want to give them the, the, the learnings. We want to have open box to get more feedback than just from these two uh, big, big customers that we have. And then I was super proud of the deliver the first innovation free truck. And I hope you saw that before Christmas we had a green Santa Claus driving away with the truck at the end. But that was for me important. This was not only we are talking about it, no, we deliver and here's the first truck and we go from there. And quite frankly, we talked about 30 trucks. Maybe you guys remember that. 30 trucks are not coming in every day, but we will continue now giving the trucks to, to our customers. That's our goal. And then at the end, and that's why we're here, CES Ride and Drive event, that's the first time that we let you guys drive. And not only the e counter that's already half in the market with one of the trucks in the US, no, you can drive also the e Cascadia here on the parking lot, and I think that will be a great experience for you guys, because it is still for me, to be honest with you. So, the question is, how do we get to this point? And co-creation is basically my main focus here. When we started in thinking about what does it take to give a truck to a customer, we were sure that it's not only the hardware of the truck. And co-creation was the first idea of, no, we need to do it with the customer. Why? Because we want to be fast. We want to be fast in learning. Some people say we want to, we want to fail fast so we learn and then we, then we move on fast. But uh, my, my boss uh, once told me that we shouldn't fail too often. But that's a different story. But anyways, when you look at it, the holistic thing of, uh, of, of e-mobility, it's not only the truck itself, it's the OEM, but it's definitely very close with the customer. And then the utilities and infrastructure. We were digging very deep and trying to figure out what does it take to charge a truck. What does it take to give a customer a truck and then leave him alone? That's not an answer to that. So always think about co-creation. That's our model. And I will talk about what co-creation really means in all the details. So here we come a little bit to technology. Because what I really want to do is getting most of the people know cars. They understand cars and charging. They can go a couple hundred miles. But I want to give you a little bit of how do we get from the cars to the commercial side because I want to drag you into the commercial side. So here's a little bit of a visual. How many batteries do we need, let's say, in a, in a Cascadia that we have right now, comparing to our smarts that we can buy these days outside? So theoretically, when you think about battery capacity and you want to have 550 kilowatt hour, we talk about what that really means. Theoretically, there are 30 trucks smarts all these batteries that you have to have in one truck. And you can imagine that's not really very light. Some of you maybe have seen that. That's one of my basic structure of what is the technology. In very easy, let's say, picture, trying to explain what is the difference between an e-truck and a conventional truck, we call it these days. Don't call it classic. Classic is already too old, so conventional. And one of the things that people understand is that they take the engine out, they take the after treatment out, and they take um, basically the tanks out, and here we go. That's pretty much what you need to take out. There's one thing that I overlooked at the very beginning. All the accessories that are normally on an engine that have been driven by a belt on, a, on an engine, they have to be now driven by an e-motor. So now think about all these different systems, HVAC, uh, air compressor, they need to have now an electric component to it that we can drive it. So there's a lot of components getting to it. And I give you another hint. We try to figure out how many different cooling systems do we need. So in total we have three cooling systems. One for the accessories, one for the batteries, and one for the axle. So for the motor itself. And quite frankly there's a lot of piping that goes on and, and cooling every little um, part of the truck differently. Because for instance, the battery, do you, do you guys have any idea where the battery likes it the best in temperature? 
Just one guess. I told you, you cannot say that. <laughs> so it's basically room temperature. So if you go up to 40 degrees C, which is, what is it, 40 is 100 rough, then you all of a sudden need to cool it down. When you are in Alaska and you have a battery that charges, or that's basically at minus 20 degree F, you need to heat it up. That you get the room temperature and you have the best performance. So these are the systems that you have to put in mind, and this is where you lose also a lot of energy. So, knowing and understanding what it takes, we announced at the Kaplan Market Day our applications. And I want to read this to you a little bit in a, in a, short, in a short way. We look at the left side, there's a muting duty. And when you look at the range with 230 miles, kind of quite frankly, we believe with 200 miles, we probably have a lot of applications that are usable for this. That's not our big problem. For the medium duty, quite frankly, it is important the payload. And now you have heavy batteries, so the biggest problem for the medium duty area will be how much payload can you put in? Big question. On the right side, when we look at the Cascadia, we have a different problem. We have a lot of space. We can put pack a lot of batteries in it. I mean, with 80,000 80, K, you can, uh, you can have a lot of big room. But on the other side, the problem here is the range. When you think of a traditional class A, everything, everybody thinks about 500 and plus. But if we put, put more batteries in there than we are putting in there right now, then 250 is the range that we are seeing logical and realistic at this point in time. Will there be a time that we go higher? I would say yes, but at this point in time, that's the only practical way. So, we talked about it. We create 30 trucks, 20 of the e Cascadia and 20 of the EM2, and we give it to NFI and to Penske. And that's basically my segue to the first event that we had before Christmas. And I tell you a secret, I wanted to get this done before, before 2018 is done. That was important for me. Because for me, Speed is important. I think this is really showing everybody that we are not talking about that we also can deliver. So we delivered this one as a Christmas gift to Penske. Um, Paul Rosa wanted to be here today at Penske. He said, I'm sorry, I had other things to do, but he put his name up there and he said, we are honored and delighted to be part of this journey, the journey of, of co-creation. What does it really mean? Because at the end of the day, we all know that, that um, in the past, we had customer demo units. We gave trucks, maybe one year before they went out on the market, we gave it as a higher scale to different customers. This one is different, please understand it. This is the truck that we even haven't tested enough to be 100% sure that everything is working correctly. So we will learn a lot. But on the other side, don't mistake. One of the things that we are never, never, never really uh, getting out of the equation is safety. And that is our biggest concern and our biggest focus right now, that these ones are safe. So let's talk about co-creation in a bigger scale. So I talked about co-creation with these two fleets. Okay, that's one step. On the other side, we were trying to figure out there's so many customers that we have and they all want to truck. Guess what happened when we announced that we have Penske and NFI as our first customers? We got phone calls left and right to say we want to have trucks too. We said we cannot produce that many because we want to make sure that we understand the technology first. So we concentrate on those. And then they said, okay, what can we do? And we created this EV council where we want to do two things. On the left side, you see basically the EV focus, what we share. These are the things that we want to share. We want to share the product, the technology, the TCO. You know, nobody has a clue right now what the TCO looks like. And Carrie was talking about the TCO this morning, she's talking about it tomorrow, but where do we land in there? We have not really everything tested and tried to figure out which TCOs we are getting. Funding incentives, a big deal. Maintenance and safety, everybody is thinking maintenance will be less. Okay, I probably can sign that too. But the safety aspect of things, who can drive it, who can maintain it, who can look at failures. It's going to be different. It's going to be different than what we had before. It's not the driver anymore that goes down in the engine and sees if he can fix something. That's not going to happen anymore. And then the infrastructure and site readiness. And here's another, here's another thing that we learned, you know. Going to the utilities and say, we buy two trucks and we get them in half a year. Do you think you will be ready for the infrastructure? They look at me and say, no, no, you need to tell me at least one or two years in advance. 
So basically, you can think about it as a race to race, infrastructure versus hardware on the trucks, who's going to be first? And that's happening right now. So then we go to the right side, our customer biggest expectation of EV. What is it? You know, I put, actually I put green on top. I would, I, would, I would ask that again. I would say cost. TCO is the most important thing for people that drive trucks. And we had a discussion earlier where we talked about, you know, you can buy a Tesla X and it probably costs $130,000. Maybe the business plan is better if you drive a taxi in the next five years. It's probably cheaper. Here, on the commercial side, we all know if you don't make money with your product, this is not what you want to buy. So TCO, very important. That comes down with the cost. And then green, yes, very important. I see that too. We want to, we want to support as much as we can. But at the end of the day, if somebody needs to pay a lot of money for it and cannot pay his family, then I think green goes a little bit away. You know, there's a wish for it, but I think there will be maybe a couple trucks, but it's not going to be the whole thing. Range. Very interesting question. Range can work for so many different people. They have never figured it out. Because what has happened in our world today? You buy a truck, and what's happening, you buy a truck with, let's, let's say, a number of 100 gallons on it, and you never thought about it. Can I drive 500 miles, 700 miles, you just drive, and it doesn't matter where you go tomorrow. You can use an application anytime. Now, with the range restriction, now you need to think about, is it a truck that I can use for my application? Is it usable, only usable here? And that makes it a little bit tricky. On the other side, what I'm, what I'm seeing right now, if we figure out how we can use these applications with the lower range, maybe the whole infrastructure changes or the whole process of how we bring roads from A to B differently. When we are not bringing everything from the west coast to the east coast in one drive, maybe we have stations in between. That will be basically coming over time when we understand what are the trucks doing. So there's a relearning and maybe a repurposing of trucks in the future. And then reliability. Nobody wants to give you a truck that says, OK, in two or three years, we don't know what the rest is, and if it's really like. And quite frankly, I buy this is why Daimler is so, um, so successful. Because our engines right now, they last 1.2 million miles. And I think you want kind of the same thing. You don't want to go back to the trucks and want to talk about rest value and want to talk about reliability. That's not what you want to talk about. And then the future, that's, that's, that's a segue into this. What happens after the truck is like five years old when the first turnaround to the second, second market is coming? What, what is it? What is the rest value? And there's interesting discussions in the market. I heard some companies saying, you know what, there's not so many BVs out there right now, so people want them, even in the second life. But what happens if there's a lot of out there and people don't understand what is the life of the battery? And there's a lot of development that goes from Daimler into this, to be really honest, to make sure that this one is not a two-year battery and that we don't know what to do with it. But that's basically the, 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 the EV Council. And we will have the next meeting in May with 30 of our, let's say, um, most important customers. And we share our findings and what we have done so far. And these will include the findings from the EM2 and the Cascadias that we will deliver, that we will deliver in soon. But there's a next step. And I want to talk about the next in the co-creation. We understand that it's not only understanding the truck and the ecosystem, we now need to understand the whole line of things that you have to figure out before you can give the truck to the 